Hello everybody and welcome back to Purple Plays The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD. It has been quite a while, hasn't it? <laughs> oh man, life has been horrible to me for, what, the past two weeks since I've been, uh, since I've been trying to do this? Ugh, well... I'm not going to bore you with the details, I'm just going to go straight into the game, just know that I finally have some, uh, some time. Oh, I didn't get it the first time. There we go. I've had so much to do lately, um, and I would have started recording a little sooner, but I wanted to reorganize my workspace. And now that it's reorganized, hopefully there's no echo with, uh, with the sound in the microphone, because I'm really close to my screen now, so I should be able to see a lot better, and hear better too. But, um, none of you care about that. <clears throat> but last time, uh, we got transformed. I mean, we got stuck in our wolf form. We saved Midna. We disco discovered Pose. And we ran into these guys. And we found the Sacred Grove. And now we know, uh, the source of those guys. That little imp kid. Or, as most people would know him. Ah! So most people will know him, the Skull Kid. And it's really different seeing the screen so close to me. Oh well. Hopefully some unnecessary noise will uh, be drowned out. Okay, so what you want to do in this area is you want to be scoping around uh, listening to his uh, instrument as he plays the um, as he plays the Lost Woods theme or Saria song. When you're in the area where the sound changes with his um, instrument, you know that he's in the vicinity, and you know when he's going to summon more of these puppets because they just start blowing into the horn, ruining the really good song. And what you want to do is that every time you see him, you just want to go straight in, straight out and lunge at him. Your best bet is to just um, do a lunge attack when he summons the puppets. I am going the wrong way. Because doing a jump attack at the puppets will uh, take them all out. You want to try and bunch him up as much as you can, that way, uh, it's not so much of a hassle. Damn it. I forgot I'm playing on damn Ganondorf hero mode, so... This is so that easy, or I, I need to be more careful if I meant to say. Uh, once when you hit him every time, he will automatic- all the puppets will automatically die. So, if you see him summoning more as you're approaching him, just go ahead and uh, attack him and it'll kill all of them at once. But these guys are actually pretty fast, so, you know, don't waste your time uh, trying to run away. Just go ahead and jump attack at him. I recommend killing them all until there's only four, because, um... There he is. Because if you kill one, leave it alone for a while, then kill, like, the other three, he's just gonna summon one, you're gonna kill that, and then the other three are gonna come a lot sooner. You know, it's kind of inconsistent in that sense. I'm going to ignore them and just go straight in for the bite. So 
So after, what was that, three uh, hits, he opens the way to what we're looking for. Definitely got some feet if he can start making earthquakes. And now we get into the actual fight. So now he's going to be uh, going on these different pedestals. And if you approach him, he's going to teleport. What you want to do is get rid of all of these. Get rid of most of them. Damn. Basically, you want him to summon them. But, as he's summoning them, he won't be able to teleport. So just immediately go after him before he finishes up uh, summoning them. But each attempt, he's going to summon, I think, one extra. So, two extra. Though. He's going to summon a lot, I'll just say that much. And the more that he summons, the longer it takes for him to summon them. So he's going to be blowing in his little horn for a while. So you've got what? One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, maybe it is one extra. But like I said, just go with the jump attack. And then... Just go in for the bite. After three attempts, he's done for. <laughs> Bye. So with that, he opens the way to our goal, which is the Master Sword. Oh yeah, Zelda told us to go look for the Master Sword in the last part, but... Meh. And she's supposedly dead now? I, I don't know. Not gonna get into it. So anyways, this is the real Sacred Grove, or, well, it was all the Sacred Grove, but you know what I mean. So we stand here, and we see that there's a Triforce symbol. And play Zelda's Lullaby. And here we have a very, very fun puzzle. We are the guardians of this land. Guide us to where we once stood. Only then can you enter the true sacred grove. Okay, so yeah, we weren't in the sacred grove to begin with at all. Okay, so... How do we want to go about this? Uh, Alright, so... Go right there. Go right there. Uh, I don't think it mattered because... Wait, or does it? Nope, it doesn't. It doesn't. Okay, so I'm just gonna go up here. Gonna go through there. I got it. I got it. And it's 
not too difficult. Go now to the sacred place, beast. We yield passage to the sacred grove. Yeah, you do indeed. So with that done, let's go reclaim our prize. Yeah, I know, I'm not very impressed either, Midna. So, this is the legendary Master Sword. So, without further ado... The sword accepted you as its master. <laughs> this thing is the embodiment of evil magic that his aunt cast on you. It's definitely different from our tribe's shadow magic. Careful. If you touch it, you'll turn back into a beast. This thing is too dangerous. It's probably for the best if we just leave it here, huh? But on the other hand, if we kept it, you'd be able to transform into a beast anytime you wanted. Yes, since Ant was kind enough to give this to us, we should be thankful and use it all we can. I love that fucking grin. If you need it, just call me. I want to keep a low profile, so I'll hide in your shadow when you're a human. But I can change you whenever. You can be a wolf anytime you like. Also, thanks to this thing, you can warp whenever you want by switching into wolf form. Hey, but listen, Pud. I've got a little favor to ask. Would you mind coming with me to find something called the Mirror of Twilight? It's hidden somewhere in Hyrule. Yes, the Mirror of Twilight. Our last potential link to Xan. I got nothing better to do. I mean, what else am I going to do? The few shadows are gone, so there's no fighting him. Although I have this thing now, which is... Honestly, I feel it's a very long blade. But it's nice, and I believe it does double the damage that our originally our Ordin Sword did. But if for whatever reason you wanted to... Ha use the Ordin Sword again, you can always swap back to it. But there's no reason to. Just like you can swap to your Ordin Shield at any time you'd like if you want that extra challenge and think you can't get hurt by fire enemies. And the Zora Armor for all the same reason. Or if you just need to go underwater. Whatever. But... Now, every time we call to Midna, we have the ability to warp and transform into a wolf, even in our human form. You can do so by calling her, or if you go to the touchpad in the corner, you now have a new icon that shows that you can go from human to wolf. And it'll automatically transform you without having to call on her. 
new handy trick thanks to the Wii U gamepad. However, in terms of warping, you still need to talk to her. But, oh, is this a godsend. Our best means of travel by far. Next destination, let's head into Hyrule Castle. And this is exactly why I didn't transform, because I knew this asshole was going to come by anyways. <laughs> Greetings, Mr. Pud. I have come to deliver a letter from Telma. She didn't need to deliver a letter because I already knew where to go. Well, my business concluded. Onward to mail! Okay, so let's go ahead. If you didn't know where to go, this is what the postman's for. But there are some folks I want you to meet, so come to my bar right away. These guys will be powerful allies for you. You heard me. Come by. I'll be waiting at my castle town bar, Talma. So yeah, she's got some nifty friends, basically those people that we saw when we were sneaking above the above the bar from the inside trying to get to um, Giovanni's um, pad. Speaking of Giovanni, yeah, I'll show you where to go. For those of you who are not following this guide and need to locate Giovanni's home, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the way. If you're like just going to look for Pose immediately. I'll be getting to the Pose, maybe, most likely. Actually, I think I took the wrong area. Ugh. It's been a while and I keep forgetting that hero mode flips the entire world, so I'm still kind of in the GameCube uh, phase. Oh, you know, this is his house. Giovanni's house. This is where all the cats gather, and if you transform into a wolf, there's the digging area so you can get inside his house. That's only if you are going to uh, go talk to him. I only have one pose, so I'm not going to bother. Said I am going to proceed with the plot. There's a whole bunch of other things I could be doing, but I'm going to do plot. Because fuck you. I love you all. Now shut up. By the way, this is where the postman lives. You asshole. Why do you provide shelter for this man? Oh my. If it isn't Pud. You made it. How you been, honey? Mercy, but you have good timing. I was just talking about you. Hey. Hey everyone, introduce yourselves. This handsome young man is the infamous Pud. You remember what I told you before, honey. Huh, I wonder what the popping's about on my speakers. Okay, so if they don't want to stop popping. These are those friends I mentioned. The ones who are trying to help deal with all the troubles in Hyrule. Actually, there's one more of us. But there's a disturbing turn of events in the eastern desert, so he's gone to check it out. There's a desert in Hyrule. He's an older man named Aru. Ar Aru? Yeah. If you happen to meet him, definitely take the time to talk with him, okay? Well, you've come all the way here, so why don't you relax a bit? Why don't you be sociable and talk to these folks? They're a jolly bunch. Hopefully that pop wasn't in the uh, in the recording. Let me double check. If...
Huh. Wonder why the thing started going all haywire all of a sudden. Oh well. Anyways, if you want to know where to go just immediately without being sociable, just check the map. Hi. That old codger Aru is at Lake Hylia studying the desert. Dumbass, there's no desert in a lake. Oh, hello there. You must be Pud, correct? And you must be dumbass. There's no fucking desert in the lake. I'm Shad. Wonderful to meet you. Telma told me all you've been up to. You're rather formidable. I'm rather not, I'm afraid. Well, I'm formidable at book reading, but I lack, shall we say, physical skills. You're a nerd! <laughs> My legend. With the history and legends of Hyrule are your cup of tea, I'm your fellow. If you're curious, just ask away. Ah, eh, you're alright. We'll be getting more into him later. Who's the chick? It's Ashy. Ashy Larry? Nope. I grew up in the mountains with my father, who was <clears throat> a knight in his own right. He taught me the arts of war as though I was his son. Of course, lessons in common courtesy were not part of the regiment, so forgive me if I come off as rude, yeah? Listen, before I blab both your ears off, I want to tell you something. Snow Peak, the mountain to the north of Hyrule, it's unlike any mountain I have ever known. I don't know much yet, but things happen there that happen on no other mountain I know of. Evil controls it. As soon as I know something more, I'll tell you. Until then, you should stay away, yeah? Okay. And then Aru is the old guy that was talking with these two. But who's this guy? Well, he doesn't have much to say. Doesn't bother you. It's been a long time. Pud. Bum, bum, bum. Hey, Russell, how you doing? My wife, Yuli, sent word to me. I have seen the children in Kakariko Village. And of course, I have also heard of your adventures. I must thank you for your help with Colin, Pud. I barely recognized him. In any case, I am troubled by my own inaction. I want to help the cause. These friends here, I have had connections with them for a long while. Like the others, I'm gathering information now. I will let you know if I hear anything. All right, so there's Russell. He's part of that. I, I like that touch. So they're not all strangers. Let's see, I'm getting to my 23 minute mark. Uh, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and head off to, uh... where, where am I going? I'm going to head off to Lake Hylia, but and then I'm gonna cut it. But before I do that, I want to get some action into this episode. So, how about another lesson? And with this, I don't have to call a Pona all the time, and I don't have to worry about being slow and rolling around everywhere. Up there, if I could, if I could, it's been a while, there's a secret point you can go to, or like a little mini dungeon, oh, a little mini dungeon, but all it houses is a rupee. Go over here, we find our teacher. With sword in hand, return to me. So yeah, you can talk to him, but he won't really say anything until you transform. So, let's learn that lesson. He don't like humans, though, I'll say that much. <laughs> we meet again. 
This next is the greatest of the hidden skills I have taught you to this point, and it may test the limits of your endurance. Do you still wish to master it? I do. Very well. But before we begin, I must test to ensure you have mastered the last skill I taught you, the backslice. Now, then, come at me. I may be a little rusty from playing this game, but I sure as hell remember how to do that. Excellent. It appears you are certainly capable of performing my last art. Very well. My fourth hidden skill is the Helm Splitter. Let it be honed into your mind. It is impossible to circle around and perform a backslice against fully armored enemies that move swiftly in combat. Against such foes, you must first use a shield attack to make them flinch, but then quickly per se. You will leap into the air over the enemy's head and greet them with your blade by immediately striking from behind. This is the Helm Splitter. Show it to me. Alright, so to execute this, you want to shield attack and immediately go for the A button. Or, you know, what ails you. Right after the Helm Splitter is the perfect time for us. Oh yeah. So basically what you want to do is a shield attack that will stun them, Helm Splitter, and then attack. Hmm, impressive. Do not miss your chance to land a Helm Splitter at with A after your shield attack. The fourth hidden skill, the Helm Splitter, has been passed on. I really do like that attack. It's not as powerful as I think it would be. It's more of like a secondary stun just to get behind your opponent that backslice doesn't work. There are still three hidden skills for you to learn. Do not neglect your daily sword training between now and the time you come to learn the next skill. May we meet again. <laughs> Alright, so that leaves four out of, what was it, seven or six hidden skills? I think he just said that there was like three left, but I wasn't paying attention, even though I was paying attention to the dialogue box. Whatever. Anyways, I'm just going to warp over here, and I'm going to call it an episode for now. I know I probably owe you guys an hour-long episode, but let's just say I'm probably going to upload two to this, uh, after this part, when this is uploaded. Maybe. I'm not sure. Most likely. Don't worry about it. So, next time on Purple Place, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, we're going to be looking for Aru, and, uh, yeah, we're going to head off to this desert, which looks like it would be over there if I had to pick a guess. I'll see you guys next time.